Hello, I'm Mr. Davis from Our Ladies and I hope everybody's well and keeping safe. I'm at home as well. I thought I'd do a little video for you to follow step by step at home and I thought I'd make some Turkish flatbreads. They are quite easy to make and they can work well with lots of different things. Um, as you'll see at the end um, when they're finished, but they're quite good. You can have them um, with chicken and salad and do your own kind of cheat, cheat takeaway. Um, and have a kebab, that kind of thing. You could turn them into a pizza. They're great with curry, great with all different things. Um, so we'll go through it step by step. I'm here with my dog Barbara. Right, so before you start, make sure you wash your hands like you would do whenever you're preparing food and get your equipment together, which is a large bowl, a teaspoon, a fork, a small tub or a cup, a rolling pin, a frying pan and weighing scales. For the ingredients for the flatbread you need 500 grams of self-raising flour. If you haven't got any self-raising flour you can use plain flour and add two teaspoons of baking powder. You need 170 grams of water, plus you need six teaspoons of tepid water, which is not hot and it's not cold, it's somewhere in between, in a little pot, uh, and that's for later on for the yeast. You need 180 grams of natural yogurt, 10 grams of dried yeast, five grams of salt, 10 grams of sugar, any kind, so you can use castor or um, granulated, 10 grams of oil, so again, it doesn't matter what type you use, olive oil, um, sunflower oil, vegetable oil, that's fine. 20 grams of butter or margarine or oil. If you get all your ingredients ready at this stage, then you're fully organised and ready, like you would be at school, how you measure and weigh everything out, and then at the point when you need um, the relevant um, ingredient, you're ready to go. And remember, at any point you can pause, rewind, fast forward the video if there's any bit you're not sure about or any bit you've missed. Right, so we're going to get going. I've got everything weighed out ready. Your first job, your little pot of water with your six teaspoons of water in. That's tepid water, so it's not hot and it's not cold. And that's for the yeast to dissolve in. So our yeast is that one. And we're going to add the yeast and the sugar. And we're going to give that a stir. And that's going to activate the yeast, the warm water and the sugar. It's going to activate the yeast because yeast is alive. It's a living organism. And for yeast to activate, and work and make our, um, our flatbreads rise, it needs the same things we do, which we need food and water and warmth to survive, and that's the same thing with yeast. So um, I'm just gonna give that a stir, try and get it all dissolved. And then we can set that aside, and you know that it started working, and it started to activate because you get the cup bubbles on top. So that's our first job before we move on to anything else. I'll just give that a really good stir. I've left the yeast for a little while. I don't know if you can see, it's starting to get bubbles. So that's showing that it's activated. And that's what's gonna happen in the bread. You're gonna get loads of bubbles, lots of air pockets, and that's going to make the bread light and fluffy. So that's good. So, next. We're going to add our salt. We're going to add our yeast mixture. We're going to add our yogurt. And then with our round, we're going to use our fingers and our thumb and we're going to mix. We don't want it on the palm of our round at this stage because you'll end up with it everywhere. So you're just going to use your hand and just gently mix it. Don't go too mad because you'll end up with it everywhere. 
start to bring it together. So at the moment you've got really wet bits and really dry bits, so you're just going to keep mixing until it starts to clump together and combine. And once you've got a lot of the moisture mixed in, you can add your water. You see I've not got it on um, the palm of my hands, I'm just using my fingers. I'm only using one hand, one hand on my ball, one hand in the ball. And you just keep it mixing and you're wanting all the dry bits underneath to combine and you will know that you're getting there because your ball will start to uh, become clean around the edges, it will all start to come off your ball. Right, so you can see, after mixing for a few minutes, my ball now is pretty much clean. There's a few, a few bits around the edges, but that's a good sign knowing that you're nearly um, there when you've got it all together because your ball is nearly enough clean. So what I'm going to do now is take it out of the ball, put it on the top. Can you see at the moment, it's all lumpy bumpy, so we're going to knead it. So can you see what I'm doing? I'm pressing, folding, pressing, folding, and each time I do that, it's stretching it and it's making it lovely and smooth. Keep kneading, keep moving it, and this won't take that long, it requires quite quick. Just give it a really good mix, combining it all together. And then, it's a little bit sticky, but it's not that bad as long as you keep moving it. And then what you can do is get your ball again, your rail, you're going to put in your ball, you're just going to rub it round your ball, get a bit on your hand, rub it on your door, and that's going to stop it from sticking in the ball. And now we're going to leave it in the ball and we're going to cover it up tea towel. Right, so now it's covered up and rising. For one hour, you can now go and wash up, wipe, wipe your top, make sure everything's clean and tidy, just like you would at school. Because you're at home doesn't mean you can go and sit and put your feet up. So get cleaned up and then we'll be ready for the next bit. I think Barbara's got bored of waiting for these flatbreads while they're rising. She's having a sleep. We're half an hour in and Barbara's just woke up to see how we're doing. You alright Barbara? What are you doing? Not ready yet. <laughs> Barbara's woke up, but they're still not ready Barbara, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. So now, I'm going to take the door out of the bowl. I can feel it's really light. I don't know if you can see, there's lots and lots of herbal bowls. So that's a real sign that the yeast has worked, it's proved, and there's loads and loads of bubbles. So I'm going to just give it a little knead again. Just bring it all back together. And then I'm going to Put it into a sausage. I'm going to divide it in half. And I'm going to divide it into four even pieces. Because this uh, quantity will make four large flatbreads. They're quite large when they're done. Each one, just give a little knead. Like that. They'll come nice and smooth again. So you've got four even size pieces into a little ball. Like that. And then once you've got them all the same size, you're going to set aside again for 10 minutes. You're going to leave them for 10 minutes 
to have a second prove. So you, when you've had them in the ball, that will be your first prove, and this is your second prove. Right, so it's been 10 minutes. Uh, been proving for the second time. So now I'm going to add a little bit of flour to my whipped top. And this is the first part all the way through I've added any flour because before they didn't really stick. They were fine when more was needed and everything else. But now I'm going to add a little bit of flour. I've not added too much. I'm just going to flatten them out a little bit and I'm going to start rolling them out. And I can already you can see there's herb bubbles around the edges, which is a really good sign. So I'm going to keep rolling. When it starts to stick, you can just rub the rolling pin a bit of flour, but this should be fine. And we want to roll them out to about 25 centimetres, which is a little bit smaller than a school ruler. I always think of a school ruler, which is 30 centimetres. So if you roll them out to 25 centimetres, and you're going to do this with all four of them. So each, each time you've done one, set it aside and do the next one. So now that it's sticking a little bit, so just take the time and I'm rolling to the edge, but I'm not going over the edge. If I go over the edge, it ends up with thin edges and then bits will burn because then bits will cook a lot quicker than the middle. So I'm just rolling out, taking my time, and turning it round. Put it in the flour if it starts to stick. And I would say, do it nearly there. So that's the first one. Rolled out, so I can just stick that out of the way and do my next one. Right, so I put my hob on, I've got it really hot, so I put it on full power. If you're not confident enough to do this on your own, you can uh, get somebody on to help you. Um, so my pan's really hot, I can feel the heat coming off it. I'm not going to put anything in the pan, I'm not going to put any oil or butter, um, so it's just a hot pan. And then I am going to get my first piece of dough, place it in the pan. I'm going to count for 15 seconds when I first put it in. And you'll see that you'll start to get bubbles, loads of little bubbles. And that's a sign that it's starting to cook underneath. And after 15 seconds, when you start to get your bubbles, and it starts to move about a little bit. You can have a little look. And use your fork to turn it over, turn it over. And again, another 15 seconds. You can see you've got some colour in it already. So you're going to cut another 15 seconds. And you're going to turn it over again. And it'll start to swell up and puff up in the middle. Can you see? It starts to come up a little bit. 15 seconds again, turn it over, you see, lovely big earth pockets, so that means all that kneading and all that proving's worked, so you're just going to keep turning it over so it doesn't burn, so you can use your fork just to lift it a bit so you don't catch your fingers, turn it over again, and each time you do it you'll get a bit more colour, and just keep on uh, puffing up until it cooks. All the steam escaping through the bubbles. Just going to keep repeating this process, turn it over. Keep moving it around in the pan. Right, I'm on my last one now. As you can see, that one's rose and puffed up quite a lot, so it's nearly done. I'm on the last one. Last couple of seconds. So in a second, when the last one's done, I'm going to then start rubbing um, the butter that we had, the 10 grams of butter. 
onto the flatbreads and that will uh, give them some flavour, give them a bit of colour. Um, you don't have to add that, it's up to you if you want to. If you haven't got any butter you could uh, use some oil, you could um, melt some cheese on them, you could put some chilli flakes on them, it's totally up to you what you uh, use. So this last one's done, I'll switch my ob off, push that one out. Just turn it upside down and then I'll do my with this one first. So move the head out of the way. And I've got my butter. I'm just gonna rub the top of the breads with the butter. I've used some garlic butter, so if you want some garlic butter you could crush some garlic um, and some herbs and mix that in your butter. And you can see they're really flexy flexi and bendable so you they're, they're really quite good for lots of different things. So I'm just going to rub the last ones with the butter. I'm comfortable it's still warm, but the butter's melting in this way. Look at nice and shiny and glossy. It smells really good. You can see, they're really flint, really bendy, really flexible, really, really good. So now they're done. I'm ready to eat. Right, they're done. I'm going to have a little taste. They taste really good. I think I'm going to have them for tea. Right, so thank you for watching. I hope you're going to give them a go. Let us know what you think. Stay safe. And I think Barbara's waiting very patiently for a piece of flatbread, but unfortunately, Barbara, you can't sell them until you have to have one of your treats. So come here, sit nicely. Good girl. Thank you for watching. See you soon.